for today's cup of coffee, I have guest co-host. Hello, it's BB. Yes, you've heard of BB for quite a while. This is oldest kid's wife, and so I am pleased to have her on today's cup of coffee. And I'm excited. Yeah, we had wanted to do this for quite a while. Yeah. And now you do have, it's a, is it a Twitch channel? Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Okay, you want to t- tell them a little bit about that? Uh, so my Twitch channel, I play video games. Surprising, right? Whoever would have thought. <laughs> but yeah, I, I play League of Legends, you know. My account on there is called Feda Alesti, P-H-A-E-D-A-A-L-E-S-I. And we will have a link in the description box. So if you want to join her on Twitch, then, you know, if you're a gamer. If you're a gamer, if you're interested, if not, don't even worry about it. (laughs) But I'm just really pleased that she's here today. And our topic comes from Ripley's Believe It or Not. And it's Steph Distazio. Distazio, it looks like it to me. Yeah. Is the writer on this from October the 9th of 2020. And the article is Bodies at the Bottom of the Barrel. And the Talk link, about the dregs, I guess. Really, exactly. And the link will be in the description box. And Steph writes, We're pouring one out for a truly spooky time in history where the hour of death meets happy hour. And people quite literally reach the bottom of the barrel. In 1828, this was the year of the railroad, and the very first common carrier, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, was born, and from then on, the world of transportation, timing, and crime would never be the same. How would it, how would you have thought that the railroad went with crime? I guess crime goes with anything. Well, I guess if you have the trains, people hop trains, would make sense for criminals to do the same. Hobos. We could be a hobo. Criminal hobos? Oh, no. Well, that would, yeah. <laughs> I think we have those today. Today, we view, and from then on, the world of transportation as a means to get people and other goods from point A to point B. Nearly 200 years ago, they had a very similar viewpoint, aside from the fact that people and goods essentially fell into the same category. And though there were many benefits to this new mode of transportation, it also came with some pretty severe consequences. During this time, Baltimore was a true hot spot for those in the grave snatching business. I mean, I guess their line of thinking was, they don't need it anymore. The city was filled with prestigious medical schools, which meant that in order to conduct research or further investigate human anatomy, they needed bodies, and lots of them. Oh, no. The demand for products was high, and the climate was basically ideal for diggers. The grounds were located in a temperate zone with little to no frozen soil, regardless of the season. Because if you're going to be a grave snatcher, then you want to have the right temperature. Work smarter, not harder, I guess. Absolutely. People willingly dug up freshly deceased bodies because it was all about the money. Hey, you got to make a buck some way. At this time in the United States, there was no standard procedure for receiving these medical subjects. Schools needed dissection material and were willing to pay to get it. They sent every staff member from students to the cleaning crew to the doctors themselves to take on this grim way to make some money. So, (laughs) plundering the ground to retrieve a freshly buried corpse was no easy task. The diggers began by shoveling at the head of the coffin. They broke the lid with their shovels and secured a large hook around the victim's neck or armpit. Like, did they not notify the families? Hey, we're going to dig up your loved ones. Do we have permission? They're like, no, we'll just take them. Oh, yeah, these were thieves. That was the whole point of it. Now, can you imagine going to visit a loved one's, you know... Oh, no, they're gone! Absolutely. Not of the living dead! Zombies! Right! And like clockwork, they tugged on this makeshift rope pulley system to hoist the body from its peaceful resting place. Can you imagine? Because by that point, they're probably stiff. Yeah. Yeah. 
And it's like, how would you have liked to have been the one that was in there hooking the body onto this? Not to mention, at this point, I doubt they had embalming fluid. I don't think they did. I, I think Can you so. imagine how bad that would smell? Well, they they had to be they had to work quick. Seriously, can I don't know if they put obituaries in the newspaper then like they do now, or if it was just word of mouth. Town crier. There you go. There you go. It says, but their greedy ways didn't stop at the grave. Like any good delivery, shipping was included in this gruesome act. To send the body somewhere, the elves, the snatchers weren't able to just waltz down the street with them, so they made the invented railroad system their new best friend. And we know what you're thinking. The stench on these trains must have been totally rancid. When you're in the business as often as these snatchers were, you come to learn a thing or two about discreetly transporting bodies. The corpses were folded up into barrels and filled to the top with whiskey to mask the outrageous odor. At the final destination, the medical professionals removed the remains from their alcoholic state and began procedures. So I guess whiskey was just the cheapest alternative because why else would they not use like some kind of clear alcohol where there's not as many contaminants? Exactly. That's, that's yeah, liquor was cheaper. It says, unfortunately, the thirst for a little extra cash didn't end there. The leftover rot gut whiskey from inside these transportation barrels was actually sold to the public as stiff drinks. No! I think that's hilarious. Ew. Hey, you're drinking my grandma. Yeah, yeah, just just a little added flavor there. It says, while other areas like Central Europe had far more ethical ways of retrieving dead subjects for their schools, no such process existed in the U.S. In fact, while technically one could be charged with a misdemeanor for the act of grave digging, people were seldom prosecuted for doing so. Politicians protected the act. Lawyers knew the way to argue it. Policemen looked the other way, and cemeteries themselves were often in on the action. However, some body snatchers weren't so lucky to be simply let off the hook. Hook, hook around the, the body. It's up there. <laughs> William Burke and William Hare were two gentlemen who were a bit too impatient to be grave diggers. Rather than wait around for people to die naturally, they resorted to the quicker option, murder. One, oh, uh, pfft, pfft, let's start. It's, it's thrown me off because I'm sitting here thinking, oh, God, have I drunk something in the past? Hopefully that was gone by, by the time that I was in the back of the drinking days. I hope so. I do, too. Ugh. Over the course of a year, the two murdered 16 people to sell their bodies to Dr. Robert Knox, an independent lecturer of anatomy in Edinburgh's Surgeon's Square. They lured their victims into the bar, got them excessively drunk, and suffocated them at the height of their intoxicated stupor. <laughs> this practice of killing and selling bodies became Became aptly known as Burking. After finally being prosecuted for the act, Burke was sentenced to be hanged in January of 1829. However, this was not the end of grave diggers or their morbid career paths. It wasn't until 1900, many years after the State Anatomy Board was created, to allocate unclaimed corpses that the trafficking finally ended. So they stopped the black market on it. And so that took the profit out of the criminality. That's true of a lot of things today. Oh, yeah. It didn't matter how fresh the bodies were if there was no call for it anymore. Exactly. But as far as rock gut, that's hilarious. Stiff drinks, that's hilarious. The, The jokes. I mean, how could you not? How could you not appreciate the humor of that? Yeah. But as far as... These people that consumed this, did they know what they were drinking? Probably not. Otherwise, I don't think people would have been able to drink it. I don't know. I guess it depended on how, how drunk they were. And maybe True. they didn't care. Did they get a discount? For no. That type? <laughs> See, I think of the cheap stuff as being like, I, I don't know, malt duck back in the day. Mad dog. Mad dog is another good one, especially that 
really chartreuse green kind. Oh, God. And, like, boxed wine. Yeah. Wild, wild Irish rose. Might as well be drinking vinegar at that point. Yeah. Well, I mean, back in the old days, people, vanilla extract was honestly one of the things that people that when they were pulling just a big drunk that they would you had to hide the vanilla extract i had family members that they're like so and so's on a drunk hide the vanilla why would they hide the vanilla because it was basically alcohol oh okay and if they got so desperate they would strain uh liquid shoe polish through light bread i heard that before how desperate do you have to be to Drink shoe polish. That's pretty damn desperate. But we've seen people today drink the gelled uh, hand sanitizer. What? Yeah. Yeah. I knew somebody did that, and I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? Did you not know that you could go blind? Do you want to die? Don't well, answer that. Yeah. So, Rhetorical question. It's just crazy stuff. People have always been crazy. People have always tried to make a dollar when they can, where they can. I don't know. There's still big, big bunny and corpse So, yeah. Anything else that you would like to say about our grave subject? I got nothing. <laughs> I'm just. I think I'm, I've blown I'm still. Her mind. I'm still at the point of. They sold it. Yeah. Ew! I can't imagine that would taste very good. I don't know. I guess it depends on how long that they were in there. So I, I don't know. Well, if they were pulling bodies out of graves, a it would stink. B they would already be decomposing. And C, I highly doubt that would make for a very appetizing drink. Wonder if they strained it. Wonder if they strained it because you're thinking about okay, grave dirt, different things like that. Of course, Bugs. I guess it was the the dregs of it. So, <laughs> yeah. True. Yes, I think we all could use a stiff drink right now. No raw gut, please. No raw gut. <laughs> coffee it's a good time for maybe a shot of captain morgan i can see it's clear so i know it's all right anyhow if you've had experiences with the paranormal supernatural encounters with ufos aliens cryptids rot gut that you would like to share that uh if you've got local regional or family myths or legends send us an email cup of coffee with scream at gmail.com and the email address will be in the description box so you don't have to try to we're flinging cats it's literally okay. yeah no but they're not being hurt they're no not. i'm just so <laughs> <laughs> and do you want to tell them to again to join your twitch thing i will put that in the description box. we'll just leave it in the the description so if you're interested in video games you know if you know anything about league of legends or if you just want to hear me suffer <laughs> <laughs> She does a good job with what she does, and again, I'm very appreciative. So, like, share, comment, subscribe. Know that you're loved and appreciated. Don't end up in a barrel somewhere. Don't become rock cut. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next cup. Bye. Bye.